The helicopter behind me is an HH-3E Jolly Green Giant, and it was used to rescue downed airmen behind enemy lines during the Southeast Asia War. The rescue version of the H-3, the HH-3E, was originally bought by the Air Force as the CH-3, and it was used for rescue work before the Southeast Asia War, but it was not used for combat search and rescue. This is specially modified to go into dangerous areas and recover downed airmen. Some of the changes they made to this helicopter included extra fuel tanks so it would have a longer range. It was refuelable by air, and in fact, that it was the first helicopter type to be able to refuel by air. It had a rescue hoist on it to uh, send down a pararescueman or a PJ to help recover the downed airmen. It also had armor and machine guns on it to help defend itself against enemy forces. The HH-3E Jolly Green is the critical airframe in the development of combat search and rescue in the Air Force. Helicopters had been used to rescue personnel actually beginning in World War II and continuing in Korea and into Southeast Asia and sometimes in a combat situation. But when we're talking about a rescue package that includes strike aircraft, refuelers, things like that, the real capability that we think of as combat search and rescue, the HH-3E Jolly Green was the first platform to do it. The methods used by Air Force rescue forces in the Southeast Asia War was well honed. Typically, there'd be two of these helicopters. They had what was called the High Bird and the Low Bird. The Low Bird was the one that was gonna go in and actually pick up the downed airmen. If that helicopter got damaged, it would back off and the High Bird would come in. And then giving cover over these rescue helicopters were A-1 Sky Raiders, and they were nicknamed Sandys and there'd typically be four of those, and they were very, very heavily armed. They would have bombs, rockets, things like that, and they would suppress the enemy forces. Then in addition to that, there was also a Hercules that was specially modified to aerial refuel these helicopters so they could stay in the air longer. Sandys, one and two, break it off. The Jolly Greens just picked up the survivors. This particular airframe is very historic. Its radio call sign was Jolly Green 22, and it was involved in several successful rescue missions during the Southeast Asia War. And in fact, there were 14 Silver Stars and one Air Force Cross awarded to crewmen who flew in this helicopter. There was one particularly important mission that this HH-3E flew. In 1968, there was a U.S. Marine F-4 that had been shot down over North Vietnam. This helicopter was sent in to pick up the two-man crew. They went in under fire and picked up the first marine aviator and picked up some bullet holes and pulled off. They went back in to get the second marine aviator, but by that point, he had been killed by enemy forces. So at the end of the mission, they had picked up 68 bullet holes. The windshield had been cracked. There were bullet holes through the rotor. It was, it was beat up pretty good. Now, of the crewmen, Three of the crewmen were awarded silver stars. The fourth crewman, Sergeant Dennis Richardson, was awarded the Air Force Cross, but he didn't actually receive it until 40 years later. In 2008, the Air Force took a look at the actions on board this HH-3E and determined that Sergeant Richardson's actions merited the award of our nation's second highest honor, the Air Force Cross. The HH-3E really represents physically something about the American character. The fact that our country would commit such great resources, and in fact no other country in the world commits the kind of resources that the U.S. does to recover downed airmen really says something about our national character.